guided GPS navigation system. This wheel, this side here, this cabin. The interaction. What is this this board supposed to do? I mean, uh, this has got a GPS and a camera. So this like this has this is supposed to take input from the GPS and input from camera and plus both the information and then decide on the way it has to go to reach the destination. Height of sophistication. Uh, we are using an uh, onboard camera with a low-end microcontroller interface to it. So it's like we are we ran we ran out of memory first of all and then it's like. Synchronization between the modules it was pretty difficult for us to get along. Potential function method uh, for for path planning is used. That is like the optimum way we found to uh, follow a path. The, here the work elaborates the uh, use of art, uh, artificial potential field with an OV6620 camera vision sensor. Uh, the two microcontrollers there connected to the onboard camera. They are inside. Uh, there's the GPS uh, in the in the microcontroller. This is called the brain of the microcontroller. The the actual one which work, uh, does the processing part. Uh, yeah. So this is this part is a very important module uh, because it actually takes care of the vision system. The uh, onboard camera and the microcontrollers and it's actually image processing is done here so that uh, optical data is actually uh, identified and, uh, and is sent to the brain of the uh, microcontroller that is here and here this is called um, this is a GPS and uh, the microcontroller uh, this actually takes the latitude and longitude uh, values and it decodes and then this is again this information is uh, sent again to the brain of the microcontroller uh, and the actual data which is collected from both of these uh, it, it gets processed in here and is sent to the uh, motors here so and there are external sensors just to uh, this just to uh, it's an added safety yep. uh, the hardware features the brain of the microcontroller the coding is done in embedded C Clearview vision uh, its features are onboard DC motor drivers, UART communication, and ISP. Uh, the camera, the coding is done in embedded C and assembly language AVR Studio. Actually, it is an open source source code under GNU GPL license. It is free to use and distribute, so we have used that and modified. Uh, the features are it can track eight colors, and frame referencing is of 20 frames per second. Well, GPS. Yeah, GPS, Global, Global Positioning System. It's a satellite-based navigation system made up of a network of 24 satellites placed, placed into the orbit by the U.S. Department of Defense. And GPS was originally intended for military applications, but then it was used for, it's used right now for civilian, for civilians. And the GPS uh, used 24 satellites that are, that are around the planet and they're traveling around seven miles an hour. In order for, uh, for, for the GPS to give information about the position, it needs at least to have three satellites detect. It needs to detect at least three satellites. And as you know, the GPS uses latitude uh, as a reference to, to give us the, the position in the world. The latitude is from zero to 90 degrees no uh, north and zero to 90 degrees south. And in this case, this green dot indicates the 30 degrees south uh, in latitude. Uh, the longitude is from 0 to 180 degrees west and 180 degrees east. In this case, the green dot indicates the uh, 30 degrees west uh, longitude. This is the engineering center. This is a view that we can get from the, from the Microsoft uh, Virtual Earth. And in this case, uh, we were trying to make a path uh, uh, because unfortunately we won't be able to test the GPS inside of the building because that's a, uh, that's a nature of the GPS. We won't, we won't, we won't be able to get signal from the, from the satellites inside of the building. 
So we're trying to make a path in out of the building from from the entrance, from the main entrance to one of the sides, you know, a couple of things. So this is more a, a more closer view from this thing. This is the information that we can get from the GPS from Parallax. They give they detect how many satellites uh, we can we have we have detected and the the local time in this case the world time it's the universal time sorry it's almost no local time and the local date the latitude longitude altitude speed and direction of travel. These are the sequence of operations uh, which actually go, will go on in onboard image processing camera. Like actually we will not be able to see what's exactly going on so what we have done is like we have written a code in MATLAB to simulate the exact algorithm what we have implemented on onboard, onboard engine system. So the first RGB image, that's the image what we got from the onboard camera. So we are taking that as an input and we are, like uh, as I told you we are converting this RGB image to what UV color space. This is because uh, to, to avoid the effect of lightning on the environment. Like image processing the biggest drawback is the effect of lightning on the environment. Like with the change in lighting effects, the pixel value can change and all of them will never be adapted to the environment. So one one solution uh, as of now is like to change the color space. So this is a YUV color space. Here you can see like it's like in grayscale image but it's actually in different color space. So from this color space uh, we are modeling and our own obstacles like actually the obstacles in the environment plus the model obstacles like are the obstacles to a robot. So even the darker regions, the shadow parts will be our obstacles. So this exactly is happening here. I mean, it's, uh, this is the process of getting the obstacles modeled. And once the modeling is done, it gets projected into the environment. That's like this projected the obstacles and the plane surface, which you can see the blue color at the bottom, that's an path for the robot to move on. So here we consider it as the plane surface are attractive field and the repulsive is a repulsive field. So robo always tries to attract towards the ground where it is easy to move on. So the simulation, I mean this part is exactly what's happening in the simulation. We give the target and destination, assuming that GPS is directing the way and the obstacles are modeled and the simulation will just direct the way out. How to find li latitude and longitude of our destination? Uh, this uh, website called as gcoder.us block. In here if you type the address it actually shows the latitude and longitude of the destination and that's how it works. With the technical difficulties and drawbacks, uh, it's GPS accuracy is, accuracy is pretty bad. So it's really difficult to play with the position accuracy uh, with the GPS. Uh, adapting to the road condition, um, the camera can. Uh, it's not possible for the camera to uh, find out the road junctions. Uh, crossing power of the low end microcontrollers and also inability to implement complex algorithms. As you can see, the image over here, there's from DAPA, it's a well-known uh, challenge where it's like autonomous navigation is done. That's like, there's a ultimate of the unmanned vehicle. Like, using this onboard vision system and the low-end microcontrollers, it's not possible to implement that kind of algorithms. So we have our own limitations, like uh, we can't uh, go in the complex, uh, we can't implement the complex algorithms, so we can't go on roads where we find junctions or where we, can, we find multiple colors and stuff. So we have our limitations and uh, we can call this a low version of unmanned vehicle where it traces in semi-model environment. So this concludes our presentation.